I don't know. I don't know how you deal with control. I mean, maybe you're a person of uh, you know calm. You know, but, but here's what I know as a as a therapist: every person, no matter how you're wired, reacts when something happens that you can't control. Something significant, like an illness or something going on in your relationship. Uh, customers who come in, work problems, stuff there. I mean, that you cannot control the market, the, the issues that are larger than you. The question for you is. What are you doing to cope with what the inevitability is, which is you can't control everything that's going on? Here's the blind spot in pop psychology. Once again, as I said, pop psychology seems to tell you, self-help seems to tell you, suck it up and be stronger. <laughs> well, you know, that's lousy psychology. That doesn't work. You're wired how you're wired. Here's something, and it may seem far afield. Now look, I, I come from an allegedly functional family, okay? I'm one of seven kids from Brooklyn, New York. I come from a family of firefighters and cops, blue collar. We were the first generation to go to college, seven kids in the family. And then, you know, you may relate to this story. When we were 18 to 20, 22, you know, in school or whatever, we met our spouses and then we did what Americans have been doing for years and years. Remember that statistic I gave you? We went off to do our life. We didn't go home. We went off to do our life. The seven kids in our family, we live in seven different states. Now, that may be far more radical than your situation, but I know you know what I'm talking about. My parents lived in an eighth until they began a trend of stalking. <laughs> they realized we weren't coming back, so they just picked up and started moving around to where we were. My brothers and sisters all have great families. They're doing great. I love them dearly. We see each other three or four times a year. Weddings, funerals, graduations, reunions. You know what I'm talking about, right? The American family, our family is more typical than it is not typical. All right? Moving all around the place. Okay, what has that done to us? Now look, you don't know me and I don't know you. Suppose my wife and I came to visit you at your house for just a get acquainted visit. All right? We never met. We're, just, we're sitting at your kitchen table. It's very pleasant. You know, you're telling me about your family and your home. We're sharing our situation. And imagine if about a minute into this conversation, without asking, I just get up, I walk over to your refrigerator, I open it up and I start looking around in there. I make a salad. <laughs> I pull out leftovers and put them in the microwave. I mean, you know, you'd be sitting there thinking, my God, who is this guy? You tell people later, I didn't know him, and like, he just like went into the refrigerator, like made food. Then he went into the den and took a nap. <laughs> Let's change the scenario. My wife and I come to visit you at your house. We've never met, we don't know each other. But it turns out the reason for our visit is we're related. I'm your uncle. I'm a cousin. I'm someone from the wing of the family that moved away a generation ago. And we're having this little reunion, and it's very pleasant. Now, even though my move to the refrigerator might still be a little abrupt, you know what I'm talking about. It would be a notch less shocking because as kin, you want me to feel at home in your home. You orient yourself toward people to whom you belong, kin, differently than you do even nice strangers, OK? Now okay, think about that for a minute and think about this. Think about your life right now. Think about the people you see every day and every week. I'm not talking about people you can get on a plane and visit, call on the phone, email. I'm talking about the mugs you look at every day, three, four times a week. You got a spouse, you got kids, coworkers, friends, occasional people that you run into. How many of the people who populate your life right now have refrigerator rights in your house. More tellingly, when you go to their house, you have to wait to be asked, no matter how close you feel. Can you just go into their bathroom and get Advil for a headache? Whatever illustration or metaphor you want to use, you know what I'm talking about. There's a qualitative difference about how you relate to people to whom you feel you belong. Let me tell you something. In the United States of America today, because of the shocking rates at which we move, and the hours upon hours we're giving to screens instead of faces, Americans have become notorious for living a life where they're surrounded by a whole lot of people, but very few of those people feel connected. In my experience, women in America don't have nearly enough other women who feel like sisters to them. Men don't have enough men who feel like brothers. And at Purdue University, where we have many international students, they are to the person appalled at how easily we shed the mentoring power of mothers, fathers, grandparents, uncles, aunts.
This is not something just to notice. I'm telling you, it is an essential for your health. The team you feel part of, when the folks were up here before celebrating not just individual achievement, but the sense of team and collegiality that is fostered in your office, in your bank, feels good because it's a replication of an essential human need. We put so much focus on our significant other. And you want to know something? That's a wonderful thing. I've been happily married for a long time. But that one person can't handle the whole load of you.